All right, hi everyone. Welcome to the Triessence Martial Art Channel. The last video I made was a patron-only video on an in-depth look at opening, closing of the hip, and how that relates to the overall structure of all the Chinese internal systems. Today, we're going to have another free video for everyone to see, and we're going to talk about what it means to do Tai Chi. Now, this is quite a complicated and controversial topic, because as we know today, besides Wing Chun, right, which is largely popularized because of Bruce Lee and his master Yip Lin, that in a way, Wing Chun is one of the biggest Chinese martial style, right? Like there's so many Wing Chun schools in so many different, like every single country you'll find Wing Chun schools. And they probably have one of the biggest practitioner base in the West. And I know that Chole Fat and Hong comes quite close to that. But if we were to talk about Mosa martial art, then Tai Chi by far has the biggest practitioner base in China and overseas, right? In China has been like this since the, 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 the end of the 60s, 70s, and beginning of the 80s, where um, the Chinese government had promoted the idea that Tai Chi is good for health, and everyone in the parks would be stopped doing Tai Chi. You know, Deng Xiaoping, one of the, you know, the, the high up government officials, you know, he was essentially the leader, but I don't actually know what rank he has officially. He actually wrote this big calligraphy saying, Tai Chi Quan Hao, which means Tai Chi is good. And because of that, everyone like, you know, does Tai Chi. So Tai Chi is one of the biggest, has the biggest base, practitioner base in China. And then, you know, in the past two decades, due to, you know, the popularization of Wu Dang through movies, as well as the Chen village through propaganda, Tai Chi has also become quite big in the West. Of course, before that, you had the, you know, the Chen Manqing from Taiwan, Huang Xingxian from, you know, Malaysia, and all of those, they were already spreading Tai Chi. But in the recent two decades, in the Chen village, Wu Dang Mountain, all of those people, they also become hugely successful in the West. So as a result, Tai Chi is another biggest influential Muslim martial art practice both in China and abroad. Alright, so naturally there are a lot of convoluted information and everyone talks differently about what Tai Chi is about. In this video we're gonna to try to you know to go down to the core of Tai Chi and to realize what exactly it means to do Tai Chi. Right? And as usual with all my video before I do that I want to examine what a few of the main incorrect ideas or false concepts of people that have of Tai Chi. So first of all, we have people that believe Tai Chi is magic. Okay, um, I'm not gonna do a demonstration of that, but I'm sure if you Google, uh, I mean, YouTuber, you can find a lot of, you know, Chi Master, Chi Blast, all of that. You'll find a lot, a lot of examples where, you know, a master will like not touch the guy and the guy will fly, or he will simply just tap the guy and the guy will start jumping and do all kind of weird stuff. Um, yeah, so, I'm not going to go into detail with that, but I'm going to go ahead and say those are fake or semi-fake. Fake ones are the ones where people are completely faking it, you know, there's, no, there's nothing happening at all, the guy will just act like he's being affected. And there are also people who does feel something, but it is not completely real because what he experiences is voluntarily, okay? Um, a person who refused to, stop, to feel that way, refused to go with the flow, will not have that effect. If I go and I tense up and I resist against that so-called Tai Chi master, nothing will happen to me. So that although the student are not actively faking it, he is portraying how he feels, it is voluntary. And does not work against a resisting opponent. And therefore that is also you know, fake in essence because Tai Chi is martial art. Martial art needs to be able to fight. And you can't fight with something that it only works if you willingly let it work. So we're going to go so that you can Google or YouTube yourself to find out. Next we're going to talk about another very popular concept that is being popularized by the Chen village that Tai Chi is another form of wrestling. So if you look at Chen stuff on the villages especially, but now even other people are doing it too. Look at the push up competition, right? What you see is people hugging each other and they will, they, will, they will try to like, you know, show each other this way or that way. Now keep in mind, I don't do that, so, I can't, so you know, don't crit critique me on the techniques. Okay, I don't do um, wrestling type of push hand. But again, if you do some of your own research, you'll see exactly what I meant. So essentially, they are wrestling without being allowed to grab the leg. So you can't do tackles, you can't like, you know, do these things, but you're allowed to to throw a person. You know, some of them even allows like, you know, a full judo throw like that. 
So a lot of people now they think that Tai Chi is just another form of wrestling. The problem with that is it's not true. Okay, the reason Chen Village did that is because Chen Xiaowang, the founder of Chen Village, the head of Chen, not the founder, sorry, the head of Chen Village, uh, after the Cultural Revolution, he didn't actually know authentic Tai Tai Chi. You know, I might get a lot of you know uh, hate, hate and hate for saying this, but that is true. And I could go into a whole video about you know, the history of him and Chen Village and modern Chen Village, but that will take too long, so I'm not gonna go into that detail here. If you wish to see a video on that, you know, you can leave in the comments, I'll probably do one in the, in the future. The point is, he doesn't actually know what to do with Tai Chi, or how Tai Chi is applied in combat. Which is why he just went and learned Chinese wrestling in secrecy, and incorporated those stuff into Chen Village. Okay, um, just think logically. Yang Ruchan, the, first per the founder of Yang Tai Chi, the first person who popularized Tai Chi in Beijing. He made a living teaching the royal family. Now, the royal family during the Qing dynasty are Manchurians. For those of you that don't know, Manchurians are famous for wrestling because they are like a cousin race to Mongolian, right? I mean, they're not exactly the same race, but back in those days, Manchurians and Mongolians were allowed to intermarry. They weren't allowed to marry other races. So they're kind of like a brother, brother kind of clan thing. So the Mongolians are very good at wrestling, and the Manchurians naturally adopted that. So Manchurians are very huge on wrestling. The entire Chinese wrestling that we see today, which is based in Beijing, at least, right? There's three different types of Chinese wrestling. There's Beijing wrestling, Tianjin wrestling, and Baoding wrestling. The Beijing wrestling is pretty much, you know, came from the Manchurians, okay? It's they who taught wrestling first, and then the, and then the Han people learned the later, eventually it became Chinese wrestling. So, a Manchurian royalty, and unlike, you know, what you think about, you know, aristocracy in France or England, um, the Manchurians are pretty hardcore. They, their royalties, you know, what they do for leisure is ride horse, shoot arrow, and, and wrestle. So they're pretty capable at wrestling. So it makes no sense if you would learn that he would invite a Han person like Yang Chan and learn wrestling, something that they're already very good at. All right? So based on this, we can deduce that you know, Yang Chan had to be able to offer something else that's not just throwing and wrestling. For, to, for him to be able to be such a big, important figure, among the Manchurian royalties. Next, we need to examine the Tai Chi classic. Now, anything that we have in this world has to be defined by a manifesto. All right? It's just like, if you want to cook Italian food, you have to first know what is Italian food. Okay? I can't make a burger and say that's Italian food, because that is not Italian food. So, you know, what is Tai Chi? The most authority, you know, the most important authority is the Tai Chi classic. It is a text that describes what Tai Chi should be. There are a lot of modern people that disregard this text and think it's all just hocus pocus or like you know, fancy writing. But the truth is, if your Tai Chi does not align with the Tai Chi classic, then it's simply not Tai Chi. It can be effective. It can be good for combat. It can be a good martial art, but it doesn't make it Tai Chi. And there are people who tell me, you know, yeah, but you know, the stuff in Tai Chi classic is not possible. So why hang on to something impossible when we can do something practical? And again, if whatever say in Tai Chi classic is impossible, then let Tai Chi die out. Okay? But changing it into something else doesn't preserve Tai Chi, it just changes it into something else. So you might as well just you know cancel Tai Chi and start something else. So the first important thing we're gonna talk about, we're gonna make today, the first important point is that. Whatever you do in Tai Chi, you have to abide the Tai Chi classic. If it doesn't, it is not Tai Chi. As simple as that. Doesn't matter how effective, how useful, how good you are at fighting. It simply does not matter. Next, obviously, the problem is how to interpret the Tai Chi classic, because it's a piece of text. And one of the inherent problems with any language and text is that it can be interpreted differently. Okay, when the, when the author of the classic wrote down those texts, he meant only one thing. But when ten people read it, they could understand the intent different ways. Which is another reason why Tai Chi is so diversified today. Everyone will say something else, completely different. If you, are, if you interview 10 different Tai Chi masters, they will say 10 different things. And so I'm not gonna, you know, I am not gonna say that my view is definitely 100% the correct one. But I will say that I spent over 25 years in Chinese martial arts, traveling around China and some of the other countries as well. And in my experience, what I'm gonna share with you now is, is the most probable explanation or understanding. Right? All the things that I've seen, what I'm going to say now makes the most sense. 
So it can be false, I don't know, but at least, you know, after accompanying so many different styles and lineage and cross handles with so many different people, I think the things that I'm going to share today makes more sense than everything else. Alright, there's another school of Taiji guys who are hipsters or, hip or hippies. I really don't like those, those, those people, you know, who read the, the Tao Te Ching and try, you know, they believe in, you know, higher powers and, you know, fighting without fighting and, you know, in the peace. Look, I mean, these things are not bad or wrong, but, you know, when you fling them around, like a new age hipster, it's very offensive and annoying, okay? Uh, if you can't do it with your hands, then don't do it, then don't talk with your mouth. So typically those guys will talk about you, know, you do Tai Chi, you're all soft and relaxed, and you'll do push hand where you know, when the guy pushing, he'll just do this and that, and he'll be like, or even you will lean, lean onto the guy, like the guy pu pushing, and he'll just be like this, you know, like you know, like, like, like that, and call that you're know, not yielding, like well, you know, like yielding without no not fighting and, and sticking and this and that. Personally, it's very offensive and it's very painful to watch because that is just nonsense, right? Um, for well, simple reason, you can do this all you want. If God punch you in the chest, you're gonna, you know, cave in and drop. Okay, those things does not work. So those new age hipsters people, personally, I hate them, and um, that's not real Thai, it's a Thai Chi. So if you're doing them and you think you're doing the right thing, well, you know, you don't have to watch this video, right? But um, I don't like them. But if you are doing that and you're willing to see a different perspective, then you can keep watching. All right. So those are also an incorrect view. And there's another, a more modern view, where they think Tai Chi is just not external martial art. I've seen people who does Tai Chi movements, but with weight. They'll have like, you know, dumbbells and they'll do single work. You know, or, or you know, Lan Chue Bei, whatever. Uh, they'll do it with, with weight on, they'll do muscle training. It's like all these belt guys doing this. And there's even um, a very, a reasonably famous guy in the, in the British MMA scene, right? He won professional fights and he also does Tai Tai Chi. You know, okay, the one thing with that person is that you know, he actually won most of his fights before he did Tai Tai Chi, so Tai Chi was a later addition. But even then, I mean, you know, he's a great fighter, he, he's got good, you know, uh, scores and stuff. But again, right, when you turn Tai Chi into external style, it kind of loses its purpose. You know, a person could accomplish just as much just doing pure MMA, right? Uh, I mean, he would say Tai Chi add to his overall arsenal, but Exactly how much he benefited from Tai Chi is, is debatable, and whether what he benefited from is what Tai Chi stands for is also debatable. So the point here is, results doesn't always mean you're doing authentic Tai Chi, it just means you're doing efficient training. That training could be anything, right? You can do boxing, be efficient like, like, like Tyson, he's prime. No, he's undefeatable and he's scary. But you, know, you can't say Tyson is good at Tai Chi, because he's not, he's good at boxing. Okay, so it's important to understand what Tai Chi actually is. Now that is a very broad topic, so we're not going to talk about everything. We're going to take one very important aspect, or shall we say the, the defining aspect of Tai Chi, which is the separation of yin and yang. All right, um, there are many theories to why Tai Chi is called Tai Chi, but in my learning we believe Tai Chi is called Tai Chi because Tai Chi is yin and yang, 50-50 in perfect division. And it's called Tai Chi because Tai Chi is all about separation of yin and yang, with the principle of separating yin and yang. If my master would say that if you cannot separate yin and yang, you are not doing Tai Chi. You can have the exact motion, you know, dan bian, lan qie wei, wu feng si di, whatever. You can do the exact motion, but if there is no separation of yin and yang, you are not doing Tai Chi. On the other hand, you can be doing random stuff that's not even part of the form. But if you can separate your yin and yang while you're doing those movements, then they are Tai Chi. So Tai Chi is not judged by what pose you, you do, you know, for, for, for 48 step, 82 step, 108 step. It's not judged by that. It's not judged by if you have single work in it, if you have, you know, Lan Chiu Wei in it, if you have Ban Lan in it. It's not judged by that either, or, you know, Low Qi Ao Bu. It's judged by whether you understand the principle of separation of yin and yang. So to understand that, we're going to first play a small game. So this one, you should find a friend and try it out in real life. And you know, it's quite easy so you can see what I'm talking about. So what you do is, you lock your arm, you ask the guy to grab your wrist, okay? Um, let's just grab it like this, probably easy, right? And, uh, and ask him to, to pull you, and then you can start off slow, so to just do a constant pull, and you will feel that if you fight him with your wrist, okay, pull a bit more, 
and see that when you're fighting with your wrist, you actually pull yourself forward. Your weight is actually in his control, right? The harder you fight with your wrist, or, the, or, or aka the contact point, the less balance you have on your feet. Of course, that means you're much, much stronger, but let's say you're of similar build, height, and strength, then the moment, the moment you detain this, you're going to get pulled over, right? You're going to lose balance. Now, ask the person to pull with the same amount of force, but instead of fighting with the wrist, you relax the wrist, and you pull with your elbow. And you suddenly realize that you have much better support, right? So just keep putting the same same power. And then I'm gonna go with, you know, so this is when I'm putting him with my elbow. And I'm gonna put him with my hand again, see what happens. But if you keep the same amount of power, and I relax the hand and put the elbow again, you see, you suddenly have better control over your own structure. So this simple again is the easiest way to explain the separation of yin and yang. And this basically is the defining factor of what differs Tai Chi from anything else. What this essentially means is, what in this scenario, right? This is not an application, but a lab test. I'm separating my arm into yin and yang. So this part inactive becomes yin, the part that he's holding. This part I'm actively pulling back or resisting him is, is young, the part that actually I'm trying to do something with. So if I isolate this forearm and my hand here, the yin is here and yang is here, and there's a separation. If the whole thing is tense and pulling, then he will have control over more of my balance and body. But the moment the point of contact becomes in and another point he can't reach becomes yang, then I have more support. And in the Tai Chi text, right, it, it mentions that, first of all, it talks about if someone spends 10 years of pure training in Tai Chi, but every time he lifts his hand, he loses the fight, then that will mean he has problem with double weight or double he he heavy. In Chinese, we call it shuang zhong. Okay? So in the, in the classic text, it says that if you cannot fix the problem of shuang zhong, double heavy or double weighting, you can never make Tai Chi work. Now, every little, you know, every branch and style and teacher would have different explanation to what shuang zhong or double weighting means. One of the most cliche way of explaining is that when you are standing here, if you're weighing on this leg, then the power must be on this hand. So this hand must have no power. That's called single weight. If I'm weighing on this leg and, and having power on this hand, then that's double weight. So in the example of Dan Bian, where we actually stand like this, if the power is here, then I need to wait on this leg. Alright, so not saying this understanding is wrong, but this is too crude to be the heart of Tai Chi, okay? Separate of yin and yang is not this. This is, yeah, this, this it ma makes sense. But not only does Tai Chi have this, every other martial art has it too. Right? If you look at karate, they also punch cross because you just simply have more balance and you can push more from the back leg. You know, they don't punch like this because you know it's hard to balance and hard to use power when you, when you balance and like when your leg and hand are heavy on one uh, on the same side. There are some northern Chinese styles who will have punches like this for reach. But you know they serve a lot of power and balance and which is why the last bit, you know two years ago I did say that northern long fist collection of styles are inferior and are outdated. So a lot of styles know that you can't balance on one side. So this isn't unique to Tai Chi. And therefore it cannot be all there is to double weighting. Another part of the text talks about that one every single place have its own separation of yin and yang. And every single place on the body have the same separation. So okay so text will say like one place, have one place's separation of yin and yang, and then every single place will have the same separation of yin and yang. So what this means is, you take any random movement in Tai Chi, if I isolate the hand, the hand will have a separation of yin and yang. If I, if I isolate the arm, the arm has a separation of yin and yang. If I isolate this whole arm, it has a separation of yin and yang. But look at the upper body only, there's a separation of yin and yang. Look at the lower body, it has one, and overall it has another one. Okay, you might think, well, well that's too complicated, right? Like, you got to think of so many little things. Uh, no, 
It's, it actually doesn't mean you have to have it constantly. It means whenever I engage a person who has fools, then from that contact point onwards, I do a separation of yin and yang based on how the contact is and what, what, what his power is like. Right? So if you're holding my, my arm here, then separation of yin and yang happens here. If he's, um, you know, if he's pushing my chest, then there will be a separation of yin and yang on my torso. If he's you know, pushing on my arm here, then there's a separation of yin and yang through the whole, whole framework. Okay? So in different movements, you have different separation of yin and yang, but the same principle has to be there for this move to be considered Tai Chi. So in Chinese, that's called yi chu yu yi chu, the yin yang, chu chu jie yu ci yin yang. Okay? So yin yang and single heavy, double heavy are actually the same thing. This is different phrases. And it refers to an idea that you don't give your weight to the other person willingly. Okay? So that's like that example. When he's grabbing here and you are pulling here, that's called double heavy. When he's pulling here, this is inactive, but this is pulling back. That is yin and yang. And you always want to give him the inactive, the part that isn't fighting back. So to him, his, his power is affecting less on me, whereas my power affects him more. And this might sound a little strange or doesn't make sense, but there's actually a very good physics principle behind it. This is pretty much how internal martial art uses the concept of leverage and falcon. Now before that, I want to briefly talk about what it means to seize the person, right? Tai Chi has four stages when it comes to combat. You need to engage, which is called jie, or, or receive, right? You need to make, make contact. Jie, hua, which is to dissolve. So, so basically, the idea, right, is that we first engage someone, then he has a force, and then I got to dissolve that force. So it's jie, hua, na, seize his weight, or balance, fa, send him out or strike him. So those, so those four words basically mark the entire cycle of how, of how Tai Chi should approach combat. Now, Na sees. I see a lot of people, right, like the Dr. Young guy in, in America or Canada, I don't know where. Uh, you know, he will tell you that, you know, Na is like, it's like Qin Na, it's Juan La, right? He, in fact, he will explain the entire Yang form as various type of Juan, Juan locks. And I would say that's rubbish too. You know, despite him having a lot of credit in the West, write many books, but whatever, it doesn't matter, right? Whatever he says is nonsense. Um, na in Chinese, in Tai Chi, does not refer to holding a joint, it refers to holding his balance or, or the center of his weight. So, that's the same example of a reverse. If I'm holding his arm, and obviously if he's fighting here, I'll be able to pull him. But let's say he doesn't fight fight here, he, he fight fight with his el elbow. And I realized that, you know, by holding here, I don't have much control of anything. Okay, you're holding on your elbow. Okay. But what if I don't want to pull him? Instead, instead of pulling here, I'm going to try to seize, seize his elbow. And if I can catch where he's pulling against me, I can still seize that force. Okay, so that's going to be very hard to see, so bear with me. So let's say he's pulling from his, his, his wrist. So this happens, right? Now he relaxes and stops pulling with his elbow and relaxes more. Okay, then he suddenly has better support. But now if I start to adjust and stop pulling his elbow, he starts doing that again. Now once he sees wobbly, now relax the elbow and pull from here here again. Um, okay, let's go back then. Right. So so yeah, so now, now okay, okay, so go go to your, uh, your, your elbow. Yeah. I'm gonna seize your elbow. Okay, now he's going back to his chest or the back, and then I still can't pull him. So the whole process is I'm trying to catch where his force or the center of his force is at, and I try to seize that. So let's say he's not back to, 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 to here, right? And I felt that, well, that's heavy, so now I need to like, you know, try to seize his back. See, now I can pull him again. But, go, go to your back. If, I, if he's at the back, I'm pulling here. You see, I can't, I can't pull him at, at all. So this is what it means by seizing someone's foot. And you can't really see the, the, the difference. So, you know, so some of you might even think I'm talking nonsense, it's fake, faking it. Well, if you think that, nothing I can do. But all I can tell you is there's something that happens within that connection that we have. That I can, you know, direct my friend or just my, my, my structure slightly to affect whether he's, you know, 
wrist, elbow, or back. And later on, you know, in Tai Chi, you want to receive the force by the waist, by the hip, eventually by the foot. And when it comes to the foot, it's very, very hard to seize that, right? The further it is away from the point of contact, the harder it is to seize. Which is why I told you guys to play the game from the wrist to the elbow. This is easy. Everyone can do it. You need training for it. But anything beyond the elbow requires proper training. You need to connect these joints with your skeletal structure in order for it to work. But just know that I eventually, you know, Tai Chi practitioner will, will put that force at least by the weight, if not by the rear foot, which makes it much harder to seize. And if a Tai Chi practitioner is able to see somebody else's force because his force is shallow or he caught him off guard or whatever, then he controls that person's balance until he redistributes that force. Okay, so this is another point that I think needs clarification. Just now, it was a static example. Okay, he's not trying to, 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 to juke me off. He's doing exactly what I'm asking him to, to, to do. But in reality, if we are actually in a, in a fight or a struggle or push hand, which obviously won't, won't do it like this either, but you know, if I do actual push hand, it's too complicated for you to see what's going on. So, let's take the same simple example again. But in reality, he's gonna shift between this, this, and that, and there, and not let me catch where his force is at. And should I catch a force, you know, you put on the elbow, and I caught that force, he'll just relax the elbow and, and, and do another force, start, start over again. And then I'll lose control over that again. If he starts a new force, I'll just start to seize his force again. So it's not like a different wound when you see somebody's force. In that split second, yes. If I can see somebody's force in the split second, and tilt his balance in that split second, and when he does that, I hit him you can result in an instant win. But if the other guy is experiencing now, he's gonna immediately change his structure, you know, disconnect from that connection, and then we start a new force, then I have to seize that force again. And the entire push hand is basically a process to train how to seize somebody's force while he's actively hiding his force and trying to seize yours. Okay, so that is why Tai Chi spends so much time doing push hand, right? It's not because it's a game or it's throwing, no, it's because they're trying to seek each other forward. And of course, like I've explained in the video where you know the purpose of push hand, it also trains your combat base basic response, right? And I'm gonna go through it basically. So it's like you know if I'm here, I can punch him there. When I comes up here, I can punch him there and he's he got guard guard me here. And when I comes here then he can punch me here and I need to protect him here, protect myself here. So it, it's a whole cycle of a possible Place where he can attack and I can counter attack. But that's why you draw these two circles, okay? So if you haven't watched the video on the purpose of push and watch that one, which I'll go into deep, in depth with explanation um, on, the, on the combat side of push hand. But as, on, on another hand, push hand also there to teach you how to see somebody's force. So that when I touch someone, I can know if his shot is too, too tense, if he's focusing too much force here, or if he's balancing on his elbow, or if he's balancing on one of the hips. And once I'm able to to sense how his structure or weight or balance is dis dis distributed. In Chinese, we just call it zhong xin, which means uh, center of, of balance. If I can find where it is, then I can break his structure in a split second. And before he can recover, I did I want to hit him or send him out. Now, you might think, yeah, but you know, your center of balance is always here. Um, yeah, that's true if you are an inert object, right? If you are like a table, a stone, a block, then yes, your gravity is always going to be, you know, perpendicular to the ground where, where your center mass is at. But humans are slightly different, okay, because all joints are quite complex, okay. Each of these joints, you know, wrist, elbow, shoulder, they are capable of operating and generating power. So even though my center of balance should be here, when he's grabbing my wrist and I'm pulling him with my own wrist too, I'm actually, this root not only pulls him, it also pulls my own elbow towards him. My own elbow then pulls my own shoulder towards him. So I'm actually, well, by resisting him, I'm also actually pulling myself towards him. Okay, because these joints are interlocked. So if I'm an inner object and I don't move, then yes, my gravity is right in the middle down to the ground, perpendicular. But because I'm actually tensing, so I'm actually pulling myself forward. It's not him pulling forward, but myself. Okay, which is why you can't say a human's center of gravity or balance is always in the middle. It changes depending on what movement you do and how tense you are or which parts of your body are tensed. So as a result, 
Human can either end up in top heavy or bottom heavy. And in Tai Chi, we want to be bottom heavy. So imagine if there is like a dead object here. Okay. Let's say 30 kilo, 40 kilo. You, you know, if you're a decent grown adult, you can pick it up. And with some effort, you can pick it up and probably throw it. And imagine I'm going to pick it up and throw it. So you, you, you know, imagine this is the object. I'm going to pick it up like, like this. I'm going to yank him out with my hip. I'm going to throw it down to the ground. Now, that's because this, this object is evenly distributed in terms of force. Okay, um, it's the same, it weighs the same everywhere. Now imagine it's in the shape of Eric here, yeah? but it's a beanbag. Okay? And the moment I grab him here, all the beans go down, and this becomes this bit of clocks. Okay, if you have a beanbag, you know, try it. You realize that when you are trying to throw this over, you have very little to work on because it's just freaking clocks. But all the weight, all the beans sitting at the bottom, and it's not going. Right? So if you want to try to throw a pin back this way, it's very hard. You have nothing to work with here, or very little to work with here. And the force you are generating here doesn't transfer well to the dead weight at the bottom. Okay. So unless you kick it at the back, which is aka the center of, of the, the weight of that beam bag, if you kick it here, it will flip over. When you throw it over here, it's very hard. So that is. Not exactly accurate, but that's as much that's pretty similar to what happens in Tai Chi when we're talking about separation of yin and yang.